I've only been able to do that on two other electric bikes. No hands. That's how stable this bike is. No hands. What's up y'all? So we received an all-terrain e-bike to review. So the bike that we received is a Mesa Plus ST. And what ST means is step through. So this is a step through e-bike, which I especially like. Now this e-bike is advertised to go 55 miles per charge. It has a 48 volt, 16 amp hour battery, 750 watt motor. This bike weighs 70 pounds and the maximum weight of the rider is 400 pounds. This all-terrain bike is advertised to go 28 miles per hour, but uh, we're going to test that out. If you want to purchase this bike, feel free to use my link and my code in the description below to get a discount. So what we're going to do is we're going to unbox this bike. We're going to uh, put it together, go through all of the features. And then because this is an all-terrain bike, we're going to go on-road. We're going to go off-road to really test all of the all-terrain abilities of this bike. So... <laughs> So this is what the bike looks like fresh out the box. Um, looks like it was packaged pretty well. I always like it when they uh, add this cardboard around the wheel here to make sure nothing gets punctured. Not seeing any scratches or anything and uh, I do like the coating of paint that they put on this bike. We can adjust the height of our handlebar. Um, I can't stress enough how nice this is to have. That means this bike can accommodate not only different heights of rider, but it can also accommodate different riding styles. Like you can do a traditional style or you can do a commuter style. So this is a really nice touch that not all e-bikes have. So it looks like we're going to have to put our handlebar on, which is connected via wires here. We're going to have to secure our rear rack uh, here because uh, right now it kind of moves. Then we're going to have to put our 26 by 4 inch all-terrain tire on here. This bike also came with a box. So let's see what's in the box. Let's see what's in the box here. So we have our pedals here and they are labeled here. We have our tools, uh, lots of tools. So I'm assuming there's a lot that we might have to put together on this bike. But for the second time ever, they actually sent us a decent uh, wrench set here. Uh, more screws here. Oh, they sent us a bike pump. Okay. Nice touch. We have our instructions here. User manual instructions look pretty clear here. Always love it when they also have pictures. Get a look at our two-year warranty there. I'm assuming this is our battery charger here. And it'll take uh, five to six hours to charge your battery with this battery charger. Okay, we're about to put this front wheel on here. Now I will say I usually get a washer that I um, to put this front wheel on. Usually I put the front fork here, then I put a washer on, then I put the screw on the outside. But I looked in the box, I didn't see a washer here. Because of the kind of nut they gave you, it doesn't look like we're gonna need any washers here. I'm now going to unscrew these and take this off so I can put my handlebar on. But I'm not going to put my handlebar on tight right now because uh, we're going to have to align this uh, first and foremost. And we're going to have to figure out uh, the height that we want. And I love it when bike companies put this marker here regarding the handlebar to give you an idea of um, how to align your handlebar here. So we're not gonna align the handlebar after we see an alignment that we like. We're gonna tighten up these two screws right here. So I kept the handlebar and my LCD display all loose so that I can um, adjust the height of the handlebar. Now to tighten up the handlebar, you're gonna screw it here. And you wanna make sure this is tight uh, because you don't want your handlebar height changing while you're riding. That would not be good. So now that I got the handlebar height that I like, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the angle and my LCD display. So this was not really clear in the instruction manual, so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna install this headlight in this front fender. Uh, how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna go 
headlight. I'm gonna put the fender here like that. And then I'm gonna put my washer and my nut at the end here. So I'm gonna get a bigger washer than the washer that they gave you. I always like my fender off the wheel as much as possible. We put this bike together it took us about uh 40 minutes and uh, we did have to use some of our own tools now from wheel to wheel this bike is about six feet long the seat at the lowest point from the ground is about two feet nine inches and again the height of the handlebar is adjustable get a look at the brakes here the front and rear brakes here get a look at the rear rack here and i'm assuming uh, a rear rack like this can usually carry like 50 pounds look like we do have adjustable suspension in the front here so um we can either lock our suspension out so we can uh, have uh, a lot of suspension there give y'all an idea of what the suspension is like here nice grippy all-terrain tires here and we've taken it for a spin a little bit but um yeah tires seem very grippy here and we can charge our battery while the battery is in the bike here to remove the battery you're just going to take your key here uh, turn it and the battery comes out nice wide handlebar here uh, this handlebar is about two feet four inches wide your standard shimano uh, gear shifter here standard grips on your uh, all-terrain handlebar here of course we have our front and rear brakes here we're now going to turn our lcd display on you have to press and hold a little longer than most so to turn your headlight on there's a button at the bottom here you uh click it and that turns my headlight on and my rear light on at the bottom here we have a horn that's pretty loud. To change your pedal assist mode, you're gonna press up and down here. You see my pedal assist changes here. Gonna go through the information on the LCD display here. Um, again, we have our pedal assist at the bottom. We have our trip time, and I'm pretty sure that can be reset. And the time since I've turned the bike on. And we have our speed at the top here, and I'm pretty sure that can be changed from uh, miles per hour to kilometers. Also wanna mention you have your speed gauge here. And these little boxes you see around the speed gauge is your battery life. We're now gonna go into the advanced settings. So to go into advanced settings, you're gonna press and hold the up and the down button here. And that takes us to our advanced settings. It doesn't look like we have a whole lot of settings in our advanced settings here. And um, you go from one setting to the next by pressing up and down. You click the power button to change the settings. So we have brightness, which is the brightness of our LCD display. We have unit, uh, which is uh, how we wanna calculate our speed, miles per hour or kilometers startup mode um let's see what that is let's click the power button uh looks like free mode or safe mode so i guess that is um how you're going to take off um it's going to be gradual or it's going to be free based on how strong you're pedaling and everything so we're going to keep that in free mode click the power button go back here and we're going to go ahead and reset our trip odometer. So we're now going to make sure we have a fully charged battery. Then we're going to go outside and try out the different pedal assist mode. So we're going to start out with mode one. And mode one here. Let's see how fast we go in uh, mode one here. Okay. Pretty easy to pedal. Pretty smooth too so far. 17 All right, let's see what these brakes is like okay, Nice brakes 17 miles per hour mode one. We're now going to switch it to mode two See how fast we go in mode two here Go up a gear Up a gear here Okay. 18. 19. All right. 19 miles per hour. Mode two. I'm gonna now switch it to mode three. Yeah, fast. You go on mode three here. Go up a couple of gears again. Oh. Okay, mode three got a little kick up. Oh, three got a little pickup to it. 21, 22, okay, 22 miles per hour. 
mode three. Okay, mode three had a little kick to it. So we're now gonna switch it to mode four. Mode four here. Definitely has some kick up on mode four, but I don't feel like it's giving me too much pedal assist, though. So that's good. 25. 25. All right, 25. 25 miles per hour. Now it's time to switch it to mode five. And we might actually be able to hit our max speed with such a short strip here because this bike has some pickup to it from what I can tell so far. So let's see how fast we go here. I'm in the highest gear. 21, 24, 28, 30, 31. Oh my God. 31 miles per hour. Damn. So I was able to go 31 miles per hour on a short strip with this e-bike, which is interesting because it says it's a class two e-bike here. Like class two usually means max speed is 20 miles per hour. So that makes this a tie for my fastest full size bike that I got. We're also gonna test out uh, the max speed of the throttle only later. Right now, let's get the lady on this bike to see what she thinks. I like, I like the suspension. You like the suspension? <laughs> Mock wheel Mesa Plus step through. Uh, what are your thoughts? I really love this bike. <laughs> you got another one you really like, huh? I really like. So this is beating out your favorite bike. Uh, um, okay, so you have a bike that you love for the last three years. Yeah. This bike is beating that one. It might beat it. <laughs> I, I'm still partial to it because you know I'm loyal. Yeah, because you've had it for a while. One thing I really like about uh, this bike is that it is sturdy. I feel safe on this bike, and it also it, it also hugs the curves. Mm. Like I feel like if I'm on a windy turn, I don't feel like I'm gonna slip and fall. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I'm going um, at a high speed and I hit a turn, I don't feel like I'm gonna fall. Mm -hmm. I feel like this bike is like very maneuverable mm -hmm. is that a word mm -hmm. maneuverable this is a little more quick a little more it gets the it gets up pretty fast the mm -hmm. speed gets up there pretty fast mm -hmm. but it's just it's also not jerky okay. i don't feel like i'm gonna get whiplash or anything we don't like to put our butts on seats that hurt <laughs> Put your butt on here. Put your butt on here first and make sure it's soft and cushioned. This hurts, okay? This is a great bike. It's just the seat, okay? What would you give this bike on a scale from one to 10? Give you a nine. Nine, I hey. Nine. Upgrade the seat. <laughs> now I only do this when a bike is really, really stable and really, really smooth, so. I've only been able to do that on two other electric bikes. No hands. That's how stable this bike is. No hands. It's uh, pretty damn stable, pretty damn smooth. We got the view here. I'm gonna start with some gravel because uh, of course this is an all-terrain bike. Go through some gravel here. Okay. And uh, things are kind of slip. Uh, no, not really. No slipping. No slipping on the tires there. Right. So like I can go a little faster. <laughs> All right, good. Very good. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. 
Now, of course, because we have such a wide handlebar and big wheels, especially fat tire uh, wheels, usually that means we can do uh, leaning in our turns. Um, pretty standard when that's the combination that you got, right? So now let's see how fast I go on throttle only. And I don't think it matters which pedal assist mode you're in, we're in mode five, but uh, the throttle should take you to the max regardless, as long as you're on mode one through five. So let's see how, how fast we go. Again, I'm not pedaling at all here. So how fast we go here. Oh, look like it forcibly stopped increasing speed when I hit 20. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if there's a setting you can do to make it go faster, but it looks like 20 miles per hour is the maximum speed on throttle only. So far, what I like about the bike is how it's a perfect combination of speed and safety. Like when I go uh, over 30 miles an hour, especially on a step through i didn't feel shaky it didn't feel like i might lose control um this bike also has the perfect level of pedal, pedal assist now i do have some bikes with fat tires uh sometimes they try to overcompensate a bike having fat tires so it'll like send you flying when you start pedaling you know what i mean this bike doesn't do that when you start pedaling gives you a perfect level of, i'll give y'all an example i'm on mode five right notice how i didn't send me jerking right so, um, that I love. I cannot stress enough how cool it is to have a fat tire bike that has adjustable handlebars, but you can adjust the height of the handlebar. That is huge because what that means is I can ride in different postures. Like right now, I'm in a more commuter style posture. Like my back is upright. This is the one that I ride in the most because um, I'm usually commuting around. But let's say that I wanted to have a more aggressive posture. Let's say I want to jump heels and I really want to get after it from an all-terrain standpoint. You know what I mean? I can do that. I can adjust my handlebar down and I'd be in a more aggressive posture. So we're now about to do some off-road riding. So we're not going to go this way. We're going to go this way. Let's see what it's like going off-road here. Okay. Not bad. Real smooth, real secure. Don't feel super shaky. Um, yeah, not bad. Uh, go down this. Let's jump this here. Okay. All right. Oh, what was that? <laughs> A lot of critters out here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I do think um, the fender in the rear is not needed. That's what y'all are hearing. And I took it off the wheel as much as I could. Um, yeah, you can still hear it. But I think the rear fender and the rear rack, I don't think you need both. So I think you pick and choose one. So I'm going to take the rear fender off. Yeah, this bike could really um, benefit from having rear suspension, but I'm sure that'll make the bike a thousand dollars more, probably. <laughs> but uh, for what it's worth, really good performance off-road. All right, so we're about to go up a hill here. Um, I'm not gonna pedal, throttle only. Let's see. Uh, Let's see how much speed we lose going up this hill here. So I'll see how much uh, this hill takes off. <laughs> and this is a pretty steep hill, about 30 to 40 degree hill here. So it's really steep. Uh, even cars slow down a bit when they go up this hill. Wow. This bike is eating this hill. Like um, usually a bike will lose about 15 miles per hour um 10 to 15 miles per hour 
Look like I'm only losing four or five miles per hour going up this hill. Uh, that's pretty impressive. So Mockwell Mesa Plus ST. Uh, what I like about this bike is how smooth and sturdy it is. Like, if this is your first time riding an e-bike and you want an all-terrain option, uh, this would be a great bike for you. Uh, I also love the fact that you can adjust the height and angle of your handlebar because that not only accommodates different heights of riders, but you can ride with different postures. I also love the speed. Like, this is a tie for the fastest full-size e-bike that I have. Now, um, I do wish the battery life was a little bit better. I went on a 15-mile bike ride, mainly in mode 5. Um, and I did some throttle only two, uh, a little bit of mode four. And in that 15 miles, I lost four out of 10 battery bars. So I think that's more like 40 miles per charge if you're going max speed. And I do wish they had more features on the advanced settings of your LCD display. So on a scale from one to 10, I will give this bike an 8.5. Uh, comment below on what you would give this bike on a scale from one to 10. Any other e-bike you want me to review, also comment below. Thank you all for watching. Peace.